we have two presenters double teaming this this story. Rose Cade uh, joined the San Mateo County Department of Housing in 2015, uh, initially as a, a housing and community development specialist and subsequently as a supervisor. Uh, she is currently the de deputy director uh, for the department and helping oversee both uh, county HCD, Housing and Community Development, and the Housing Authority of uh, the county, which has a better acronym, HACSM. Uh, but as deputy director, uh, Rose works closely with senior managers and supervisors, uh, administering uh, a number of programs, including HUD-funded rental assistance, CDBG, which I'm not sure what that stands for, uh, HOME, which is a very good acronym, and ESG, as well as state and local funded programs, including Measure K, the Affordable Housing Fund, and most recently, the State of California Home Key Program, um, and a number of others. Uh, she hails originally from uh, Alaska, was as a, a, an MBA from the University of Alaska, Fairbanks, and has worked in affordable housing uh, in various capacities for 30 years. So Marianne Sargent um, has uh, 18 years of experience in affordable housing policy, planning, finance and development, urban planning and nonprofit organizational development and fundraising. Um, and uh, super, supervises a great staff and in multiple innovative, affordable and permanent supportive housing projects. Uh, and is happy to work in a thriving Bay Area County uh, and uh, um, implementing uh, Bay Area housing finance agency financing tools uh, for high impact housing programs. And we're going to hear more about that. Um, so HCD, Housing and Community Development, uh, assists very low, low and moderate income residents through financing and community development in order to stabilize and improve their quality of life. So very uh, commendable program. Uh, th they're working through loan financing, project funding, and technical assistance, in addition to services provided through partnerships uh, with nonprofits and other public agencies and private sectors. Uh, so uh, with that, I'll have you to take uh, take it away and uh, tell us about San Mateo County and their uh, use of home key projects in terms of the, uh, the functional zero strategy. Um, hi, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, welcome everybody. Um, it's our pleasure to come and talk to you about um, the county's home key projects. Um, and I think, uh, Marianne, that you're going to start us off, right? Or am I doing the first three slides? Yeah, you're starting the th slides. I just want to make sure, do you see the slideshow? I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and right. so um, so uh, the first, uh, can you advance the slide though, Marianne? Sure, there you go. So the first slide talks about um, what is Home Key. So I don't know the extent to which y'all are familiar with this, but the Home Key program grew out of um, the um, the impact of that COVID had on the homeless, who had many of whom were either living on the street or living in congregate shelters, which made them particularly vulnerable to the coronavirus. And so, the state of California initially uh, created the Room Key Project. And the Room Key Project put uh, folks into uh, who had been living in congregate shelters into hotel rooms, and we, you know, worked in partnership with owners of hotels and uh, paid, you know, a, a negotiated fee for that. And as y'all know, uh, the. Uh, hotels were pretty empty at that time because people were not traveling. So um, in 2021, the state uh, established the Home Key program um, and uh, it was funded in part uh, initially by uh, the CARES Act funding and then subsequently by the American Rescue Plan Act or otherwise known as ARPA. Um, eligible applicants are local jurisdictions and public agencies, and that's why we applied. Projects are non-congregate shelters. Um, so 
we think of shelters in two ways, congregate shelters, which is sort of like your traditional shelter where people may be in more of a open dorm room or like maybe three or four people might share smaller rooms um, and then congregate shelter or non-congregate shelters, which um, in which people have their own room with their own door, oftentimes their own bathroom, but typically not um, a kitchen and uh, really similar to uh, shelters. It's really a program and it's meant to be transitional. Um, also, in addition to the non-congregate shelters, another eligible use of the funds was to create permanent rental housing, also known as permanent supportive housing. So we could use the funds, um, and applicants could use the funds to acquire, or uh, with a re with a with or rehab with or without rehab, motels and hotels, hostels, or other sites that could be converted to housing. Uh, they, we could use a master leasing for non-congregate housing, um, an eligible use was not new construction. We could buy affordability, affordability covenants in permanent housing. We could pay for relocation costs and we could capitalize operating subsidies for the home key units. And as we go through the slide presentation, we'll talk a little bit about the way in which uh, San Mateo County has used um, the home key funding for a number of projects. So you can go ahead and advance to the next slide. Um, did you want to do this one? See, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that one. Um, let's see. So, um, so in terms of the home key project or the program from um, California in the Bay Area, there is a very active group of what we call housers. Uh, there are um, a number of nonprofit um, affordable housing developers that operate um, housing, affordable housing, and those organizations partnered with area jurisdictions. So there's a pretty um, thriving and um, friendly competition among all of our entities in the Bay Area to get funding. Um, so there is there's been significant de demand um, for this funding in the Bay Area, and there's a lot of properties um, and housing units that are putting on that have been put online um, during the first two rounds of this program. Um, what is significant about this program is that it also provides some um, legislative cures to common problems that make it difficult to develop this type of housing and especially um, the contentiousness of um, um, housing extremely low income people. And in this case, uh, individuals who have experienced homelessness either um, briefly or chronically um, unhoused. Uh, Additionally, this program demands very, very quick turnaround and uh, and uh, and incentivizes putting these units on in in use very quickly. Twelve months is it seems like a long time, but it's actually very short in the scheme of what it takes to put together, you know, all of the agreements and to. Um, work with our partners, the development partners to get comfortable with the, the in, in some cases, very significant um, responsibility and financial um, risk um, for having these properties. Uh, the occupancy, um, the goal is to get full occupancy within 90 days of construction. Um, and and that uh, actually, you'd think it's it would be an easy thing to do, um, but given um, how difficult it is to um, bring people into housing after spending so much time on the streets, it it, it can be challenging. Um, and additionally, um, there's just a lot of deadlines that we are addressing right now with expenditures and um, ARPA, the federal funds that originate all of this activity. They um, they really want to see the funds active and in place and on the ground. So there's it, it, we're moving quite quickly with all of these um, projects. So I think the next one is. I was going to talk uh, about functional zero. I think yes. 
Um, and so uh, around the time of maybe the first year, at the end of the first year of COVID, um, I think our board of supervisors and the county executive's office really saw that um, we could do a better job of um, providing housing opportunity for people who are homeless and um, established a, a goal of getting to functional zero, which basically the idea is that it, it, anyone who is homeless, but who would like a home uh, will be offered one. And so um, that's been a goal since uh, 2021 of the county. And the county um, as a result has put a lot of resources into achieving that goal. Uh, the home key, uh, conversions, which we're going to talk more about in the various projects that we have brought online since 2021. But um, uh, the, the, there's also been additional funding for um, services or hot teams that go out on the street. And so there's a real um, political will and commitment to this concept of functional zero. Um, annually, uh, there is uh, actually it's every other year um, local jurisdictions do what's called a pit count or a point in time count of um, how many homeless people there are within their jurisdiction and so um, in 2022 uh, the pit count uh, identified about 1800 716 were sheltered in shelters um, and uh, or or uh, vehicles and then 192 were unsheltered. So uh, as I mentioned before, what HomeKey did was provided the resources that allowed uh, local jurisdictions to create housing options for homeless. Um, and as Marianne mentioned, to um, leverage those state funds along with local funds um, and sort of the CEQA exemption, which fast tracked our ability to move quickly and not have to go through a typical entitlement process and um, really get these projects completed and um, providing housing in uh, a very short period of time. It's uh, not for the faint of heart. Um, it's a really, really difficult uh, program to participate in. Um, but I do wanna say one thing about the sustainability, like taking existing buildings and converting their use is a highly sustainable practice, right? right. We are definitely using a resource that's already in place uh, for a different use and, and a public uh, impact use. So, um, one of, some of the reasons that home key is difficult is that the state awards are limited. They require a local match. And so without the political will of our board of supervisors, we would not have been able to apply for the home key funding. But our um, our board allocated uh, regular county funding as well as um, the CARES Act funding that the county received from the federal government and subsequently the ARPA funding. Um, even with CEQA exemptions, uh, it's, you know, there are still people who come out. We recently um, have been in a process to try and acquire a property in Millbrae, and that really uh, was has been very contentious. Um, we definitely have gotten pushback from other jurisdictions or other local communities and neighborhoods. Um, and we've worked really hard to engage in those communities and to address their concerns. Um, it requires a close collaboration. So the Department of Housing has worked really closely with our Human Services Agency, with the Agency of Real Property, Department of Public Works, a county fiscal office. You know, all of those agencies have had to work really closely to make these projects, uh, you know, move from being a concept to reality. And as Marianne mentioned, there are these very aggressive state deadlines um, for acquiring properties, for completing the rehab, and for moving folks in and providing the housing for them. Um, I just want to, like, as we go into the shift between sort of the background and the projects that the county has in our portfolio, I do want to say that we have received a total of five Home Key Awards. We received two in 2020, uh, one for interim housing and one for permanent supportive housing. And in addition, the county said, this is a really cool model. We're not going to get uh, additional funding to do another home hotel acquisition, but um, we want to do a third. And so we, we also use County CARES Act funding to buy a hotel and convert it without home key funding on the coast. And it's the very first shelter that um, the county has on the coast. Um, 
the total of our home key awards uh, over those five projects is $119 million. Uh, so very significant financing to bring those five pro projects to reality. And uh, in each case, it's only a portion of the funding. Um, the county has had, as I mentioned before, has had to match the funding that came from the state. And so Marion, if you want to go ahead and go forward. So the first property that we purchased was the Pacific Inn. Um, it's now known as the Pacific Shelter. It's in Redwood City. Uh, it um, has 51 units. Um, we renovated those units and converted them to non-congregate shelter. Um, I think one of the, um, and each many, actually I think every single one of these properties, the, the thing that we really, um, that wasn't uh, like existing in the hotels or motels that we really needed to be mindful of is to create resident serving space. And so um, there were, uh, you know, these 51 units, but they, they had a very small little like uh, breakfast nook uh, to serve the motel clients. And so uh, we have built um, a community room um, in the parking in what the former parking lot. Um, this project is operated by Samaritan House, one of the um, shelter operators in uh, San Mateo County. Um, and we started uh, providing uh, non congregate uh, shelter to individuals. But um, one of the outcomes of COVID is that our homeless family numbers have shot up. Um, we used to really feel like the highest priority was individuals, but as um, people lost their housing due to COVID-related uh, impacts, our uh, homeless family numbers have increased. And so now Pacific Shelter prioritizes homeless families. Our goal um, and the goal of Home Key, one of the uh, goals of the Home Key program is to create this interim housing, but with an eye towards eventually creating permanent housing, converting that interim housing to permanent housing. And so that has been part of our strategy. And one of the reasons why the county has been so aggressive is we've tried to like create um, a significant number of uh, interim housing or, or non-congregate shelter units with the goal of um, getting to the functional zero, but our ultimate goal would be to start converting some of these shelters into permanent supportive housing over the course of the next five to seven years. Um, this project got a home key capital award of 15 million and an operating uh, award of 1.8 million. And so uh, the capital is a sort of one-time investment. The operating funding is forever um, with the permanent shelter or the interim shelters. We've made a commitment to um, make these projects affordable uh, and available to uh, house homeless folks for 10 years. And with the permanent supportive housing, it's a 55 year commitment. And so um, it's really been a struggle for um, not just San Mateo County, but other uh, jurisdictions that have received home key funding to determine how are we going to fund the long term operating costs of these like now um, significant numbers of, of uh, non-congregate shelters and permanent supportive housing. So in addition to the home key funding, the county utilized um, I, I believe it was actually County Cares Act funding of 11.5 million um, to make this project happen. So um, you can go ahead and advance the slide. Um, the second uh, non-congregate shelter that we purchased with home key funding was in the second round. Um, and uh, the, the round was 2021. We, um, uh, got the award late in the year and we purchased this uh, El Camino house, which had been known as Stone Villa Inn in San Mateo um, at the beginning of 2022. Um, it's 44 units. It's also operated by Samaritan House. Um, we um, purchased an adjacent parcel. And as we look towards um, converting this property to permanent supportive housing, we'll probably most likely um, uh, demolish the existing housing and assemble a larger parcel with a higher density than what, what's there now and create um, affordable housing uh, for low-income families, uh, individuals, and formerly homeless individuals. Our Home Key Capital Award for this project was over 11 million in addition to 2.2 million in operating and local ARPA funding of 4.5 million. 
and then one more in the interim housing space. And that is our navigation center. And this is um, sort of a flagship. Uh, it's the one project that we did new construction on. Um, it's, uh, it's in operations. They completed construction a few months ago. Um, it's, uh, we, we use modular construction. So, you know, an innovative construction type. Um, it's got very, very robust uh, wraparound services on the campus, uh, including um, a medical and dental uh, health care professionals that come in on a regular basis, and they have their own space on the campus. There's a, um, ongoing substance abuse uh, treatment that happens, as well as behavioral health and many other services that help stabilize the homeless individuals and prepare them uh, to live independently in permanent supportive housing. Um, it's a very large home key award of 46.1 million. I believe it's, if not the largest, uh, close to the largest home key award in the state, um, uh, $9.2 million in operating funding and um, the county put in $8 million. Um, I don't know if we wanna just hold and look at questions at the end. Dennis, do you have a recommendation? Uh, yes, let's let's do questions at the end. Um, and I'm assuming this question is though regarding the navigation center. Um, well, there's no time limit, uh, but the goal is to, as I mentioned, stabilize people and um, make sure that they can be sent successfully transitioned to permanent housing. Um, we're not in the business of creating homelessness, and so we wouldn't. Uh, require someone to move out. And one of the challenges with interim housing is uh, even when you get people to the point where they could live independently, um, will there be a, a unit that's available that's affordable to them? And so um, we've combined lots of resources and uh, we received funding from the federal government for what was called the emergency um, housing voucher program. I believe we got 210 vouchers. And uh, that was a really powerful tool that allowed us to move people from the shelters into permanent housing, either housing that had been developed by nonprofit developers or housing in the market, because that's how vouchers work. Vouchers make up the difference between 30% of the household income and what the rents are. And so, um, San Mateo County was very effective at putting those vouchers in the hands of eligible um, uh, households and connecting them with housing. We, um, I believe, have uh, placed all 210 of the vouchers and people are living in housing. Um, as we have added um, permanent supportive housing, either through the Home Key program or through some of our other programs, obviously there's a priority to refer people from the what's called the coordinated entry system. So when people are homeless, they get registered into the coordinated entry system. And um, we do prioritize people based on their acuity. So the people who are least likely to be able to live independently without support uh, are the highest priority for referrals to supportive housing, housing that comes along with services. Um, so there's no hard and fast, like how long can they stay? Uh, we we hope that people transition through and that we're, we've done a good job of making sure there's a place for them to go uh, once they're ready to live independently. So do you wanna to move to the next slide? So I'll pick it up from here. So Rose, in those first three properties, um, those were our non-congregate shelters. Um, in my section here, these next two properties that I'll be discussing are permanent supportive housing uh, that were developed in these in uh, two additional hotels that were purchased. Mm -hmm. The first one is was formerly Town Place Suites and is now called Shores Landing um, on Redwood Shores in uh, Redwood City. Um, and it, 95 unit hotel, it's uh, out on the waterfront and is has been converted to house formerly homeless seniors and um, those that have, uh, that are 
yeah, basically seniors and disabled. The developer for that property was Mid Penn Housing, and the service pr provider is Mental Health Associates. Um, and that is a local service provider uh, here on the peninsula. The home key capital award was $18 million, and there was a matching funding from San Mateo County through both the ARPA funds that were received directly um, from the federal treasury um, and Measure K, those two funding sources combined was a, a little under $11.5 million. Uh, additionally, um, so you'll, you'll see the trend here is that there's multiple funding um, funding sources stacked on top of each other to make these properties work because in, in this particular case and in the next one, permanent supportive housing really does demand high touch in terms of services and potentially case management wraparound services. Um, so additionally, for this property, uh, the they there's state funding, CDBG, um, actually the funding that was allocated through emergency um, CARES Act funding, that's um, the CV is a coronavirus specific funding. So that was $4.5 million. And then the state CASH, which is California Emergency Solutions and Housing Program. And this one's an interesting source in that um, voters in 2018 um, adopted this program indirectly. Um, it's the California, uh, the Building Homes and Job Act. It was a $75 fee on rental real estate transactions. And then that funding was the, as a, it cordoned off a portion of that funding through SB 850 in, um, in that same year to allocate a specific amount of money directly for uh, homeless house, uh, housing that would um, address those individuals that were experiencing homelessness. So um, for those of you who voted for that, um, that, that act, the Jones, uh, Jobs and Home, Homes and Jobs Act, thank you, <laughs> your money at work. Um, it, this property has 43 emergency housing vouchers and 50 counting housing vouchers, which is another program that um, is also particular to San Mateo County. There's um, county housing voucher funds in Shores Landing and also in the next one that I will, um, I will cover um, that information more in the next slide, which is um, our home key round two property, permanent supportive housing property called Casa Esperanza. This property is in uh, Redwood City. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Um, also in Redwood City, 51 unit motel um, conversion. The developers, Alta, another. Um, Peninsula developer called Alta Housing. You want to um, advance the slide, Marianne? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get that one. Sorry. Um, and uh, supportive services through Mental Health Association. Um, home key capital of 12, a little over 12 million. Operating subsidies of a little under 3.5 million. Measure K money. And again, ARPA funds um, at about 2 million and um, a partnership with Redwood City and their home funding, um, just under 1.5 million. And so just to highlight the county housing vouchers, um, so uh, Shores Landing and Casa Esperanza both received county housing vouchers, which um, was again, San Mateo County's response to the high cost and high needs of the Home Key program, and is specifically intended to um, address the gaps in um, the ability for the tenants to pay any rent at all, and to give some long-standing or long-term kind of stability to the property when it res as as you know the as an operating. It, it acts basically as an operating subsidy. It will eventually, um, it, it is funding an ongoing reserve. Like if, when 
when all of the operating costs are satisfied through either the vouchers or the other subsidies, that those savings go into reserve accounts that then, um, you know, assist in, you know, the, the future, if there are any, you know, gaps in funding or um, shortages of funds. So it's kind of an ongoing um, rainy day fund. Um, as the operating, as the property is operating. So those are two that are currently underway that are currently in, that have been leased up and are um, unoccupied. Um, in round, there's a third round of home key funding that the county um, has applied for. It's um, home key round three, and we are still waiting to hear from the state on this, um, this round of funding. So we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping for two more properties that will also be permanent, will add to our permanent supportive housing stock that will address, um, you know, ongoing needs of those experiencing homelessness in San Mateo County. So um, the, the Quinta Inn in Millbrae is proposed um, to be converted from a 99 unit hotel to a 70 unit property um, for families and senior citizens. Um, all, most of the units already have kitchens. So that is um, a great benefit to have, you know, the livability already existing in the in these in this property, um, the developer is Episcopal Community Services of San Francisco, and they also provide services um, and are a well well um, regarded agency that operating out of San Francisco, where there's quite a number of existing permanent supportive housing properties. So the proposed um, award if we do receive it is 26 million to um, for the acquisition and renovations uh, operating subsidies of just under 4 million and um, and match funds from the county um, and the final property if you know fingers crossed uh, we get funded for it is a 45 unit hotel um, the air uh, the Ramada Inn in South San Francisco, and it's the same developer partner, same service commun uh, service provider. Um, and we're just waiting to hear from uh, the state on these two properties and keeping our fingers crossed um, to apply whatever learning we are um, undergoing through Shores Landing and Casa Esperanza to apply them to these two properties. Um, I'm going to just advance through to the end here. Um, we have a, a, let's see. Oh, and I didn't advance those two slides. So this is the, these are the key points on the uh, Ramada Inn. This, this, the second of two that are currently under consideration in, um, in the state of California, home key round three. And then um, we also have a, a video um, of how our home key um, program is changing lives in the te tenants. Um, and I think we will just open it up for questions at this point. Um, we appreciate you, your interest in our programs. Well, thank you uh, very much. Um, we, uh, I guess there was uh, the, well, you you actually answered the 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 one question that was posed uh, uh, that uh, in the navigational center uh, that uh, there isn't a, uh, a fixed cap on uh, resident stay, um, and uh, uh, do you so uh, in terms of capacities uh, you have. I guess the two uh, projects that you're waiting on in Millbrae and South City, um, where does that, I mean, assuming uh, those projects are looked upon favorably uh, in Sacramento, um, where, where does that track with uh, your projections of need? Oh, Rose, you're muted. So um, functional zero it does mean like, like it, uh, it, 
a home, but is but also it means a bed. So basically, like a roof for anyone who is homeless and doesn't and and it, you know we we want we can't force people to come into a shelter or you know to access a, a permanent supportive housing, but we want to make sure that like if someone wants a bed, they will have access to it. And with uh, the completion of the navigation center we are close to functional zero. Um, homelessness is an ever moving like number, you know, so people become homeless, you know, at a re on a regular basis. And um, like, unless we can move people through the interim housing, there will be then, you know, a backlog. And so the permanent supportive housing piece is really important component um, to making sure that like, people can come into units in the interim shelters when they're available. In addition to the home key properties, um, we require that every developer of affordable housing that receives funding from the county set aside 5% of their units uh, for people who are homeless and get referred over by um, the coordinated entry system. Um, in addition to the county housing voucher program, which is funded by the county, but the Measure K funding, um, the uh, Department of Housing is in my introduction, um, you, you mentioned Dennis, that it includes the housing authority. And so we do have um, section eight federal vouchers, but we have a pretty high utilization rate. Um, but uh, we have received a lot of special uh, targeted vouchers. We uh, we're very aggressive about applying for what's called PSH vouchers, so permanent supportive housing vouchers, or Main Street vouchers, which provides funding to people who um, are disabled. Um, the emergency housing vouchers, we got um, some funding in collaboration with the um, uh, the um, Human Services Agency and the Continuum of Care recently, I believe there were 40 new vouchers and those are targeted to homeless. And we also do what's called project basing some of our vouchers. And when we project base vouchers, uh, the requirement to house homeless individuals, which include homeless veterans, um, that percentage goes up from 5%. And I, I can't, re I'm not recalling. Uh, what the percentage is, but, and so our goal is to have this sort of balanced approach where, you know, we're putting investment into the shelters, but really in order to make sure that those shelters continue to be available to people who become homeless, we need to be able to move folks through mm -hmm. and, and, and have them land in permanent, permanent housing. Well, Rose Cade and Marianne Sargent, thank you so much for coming and presenting uh this uh, good, well, I, I, I knew it was kind of a, a good story on housing the unhoused in San Mateo County. And uh, uh, we'll be certainly keeping track uh, of this. And uh, best of luck that uh, the winds from Sacramento blow favorably. On <laughs> Thank you. Project. Uh, yeah, we're, we're it's, well, it's kind we're of ready. counter to the prevailing winds, I suppose. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, we hope they uh, are uh, especially good. Yeah, we would definitely like to add to that portfolio. So, okay, well, thank you very much once more. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you